Hello again, my name's John and welcome to part 2 of my Stutty Cake with Ham and Peas Pudding video. In this part I'll be boiling a small ham and of course making the peas pudding. I'll also be serving this meal with a couple of my homemade pork and leek sausages. If you want to have a go at making this yourself, here's a list of the ingredients you'll need. There'll also be a list in the description box underneath the video. OK, I'll be boiling this 1.3 kilogram, that's an almost 3 pound smoked gammon joint, but I won't be using all of it for this piece pudding. You don't have to do this step, you can always buy some already cooked for this recipe. And you'll need about 200 grams, that's about 8 ounces. It doesn't have to be smoked ham, unsmoked is fine too. It's just we prefer the mild smoky flavour. Right, once the ham simmered away for a couple of hours, I'll carefully lift it out of the water, remove the protective plastic heatproof film and set it aside to cool while I get started on the piece pudding. Now traditionally a ham shank was used for this, but I find these hams much better and easier to prepare. And it works out cheaper than ham shanks these days. The only downside I can see to using these hams is the water is a bit too salty to boil the split peas in. Also, in this case, the smoky flavour from the ham would be too overpowering. There's no need to include any salt in this recipe because there's plenty of salt in the ham and the stock cube. Now, onto the main part of this recipe, the peas pudding. I'll start with one and a half litres, that's two and a half pints of water in a pan and stir in one chicken stock cube and let that dissolve. Next is the 500 grams, that's 17 ounces of dried yellow split peas. Now these are very cheap and readily available in supermarkets across the UK, but I'm not sure how available they are in other countries. And I don't know of any alternative you could use either. Now pour the peas into the pan and bring it to a boil. Don't worry about the bits that you see floating on the water, those are just the herbs from the stock cube and not from the peas, as these peas are pre-washed and ready to use. Once the water starts to boil, put a lid on so that the water isn't evaporating during the cooking process. Now there's no exact time for this stage, what you do is keep giving it a stir with a spatula or as I'm using a flat wooden spoon every 10 minutes or so. It usually takes about 35 to 45 minutes, but I'll show you how it's going at different stages. And this is what they look like after the first 10 minutes. As you can see the peas are starting to swell up as they absorb the water. What we're looking for is for them to rehydrate, soften up and eventually break down into a thick liquid. But this has to be done slowly on a low to medium heat. Now it's 30 minutes on and they are definitely starting to break down, so keep taking the lid off and giving them a stir every few minutes to prevent them sticking to the bottom of the pan. Ok, after 40 minutes these peas are soft enough and it's time to add the 85 grams, that's 3 ounces of my homemade butter and give it a good whisk. Now you can either use a hand blender like me or a hand whisk. If you do use a hand whisk it won't be as smooth as using the blender but some people, like my brother Bob, prefers his peas put in a little coarser. But I'm a smooth guy so I'll be using the blender for mine. Right, just out of interest, this is how I chopped up some of the ham I did earlier. 
I did this in between stirring the peas. It's still a little on the hot side, but that's okay. This is about the size of the pieces you need. Try not to include any fat, keep it lean. Now add the ham to the piece pudding and mix it in. Now I need to get the piece pudding into the mould while it's still hot. So I'll be using this £3 loaf tin. And all I need to do with the tin is grease it with a little butter. You'll also need a piece of grease proof or parchment paper. A bit bigger than the mould you're keeping the piece pudding in. Now carefully pour the mixture into the mould and scrape out the excess using a spatula. Once it's all in the mould, give the tin a few taps on the bench to level it out. Coat the contact side of the paper with a little butter and place it over the top of the piece pudding, getting as much air as you can out of it. This will prevent the piece pud from drying out as the butter on the paper melts and it creates a seal when it sets up in the fridge. Now place the tin on a wire rack for about an hour before putting it in the fridge and after two hours in the fridge it should be ready to use. And a quick safety tip from my many years of working in commercial kitchens is to anyone that doesn't know the reason you don't put anything hot in a fridge. Basically all you're doing is raising the temperature inside an insulated box dramatically which will raise the temperature of other food that's in there. And there lies the danger, because that definitely could cause food poisoning. Right, it's four hours later and it's time to put a simple but delicious meal together. First I'll fry off some of my homemade pork and leek sausages. Next I'll cut and butter a nice big piece of the stotty cake using the homemade butter. I'll leave a link in the description box on how to make butter at home. And now to see how the piece pudding has turned out. And it's set wonderfully. Now being extra careful not to scratch the loaf tin with the knife, I'll lift the piece out. probably do a video on how I make these sausages in the future, but you do need a machine to make them. And there it is looking wonderful. Only thing now is to try some. I like a good helping of English mustard with mine. Now peace pudding is mostly served cold, but it is very nice heated up in the microwave. I know cooks always say this, especially about their own cooking, but this really is an absolutely delicious meal. 
My wife's favourite meal is this homemade paste pudding with my French baguettes straight out the oven. And honestly, that is a fantastic meal and deserves a double thumbs up. I really hope you try this one, it is definitely worth the effort and is enjoyable and easy to make too. And there you go Neville, my brother-in-law down in Manchester. He requested your study cake and you got peas put in too. All you got to do now mate is to make them for a taste of home. Well thanks again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. In the meantime here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So until the next time, bye for now.